is real. What is Jess Solari? Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lie. Jess is gonna bring you numbers. Jess with the mess. I need this real. On the Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Keep it a stack. Who's that in the intro that say Jess gonna bring you numbers? Who's that? I think a listener. I think a listener. I think a listener. That sound too clean to be a listener. I love that. Sound like they was in studio. Who was that? Like an interview. It sound like an interview. Taylor mm. texted us to tell us who that was. That mm. said, "Just gonna bring you numbers." Well, until we find out who that is, Doja Cat blamed the energy drink for her Cardi B impression. So, uh, Doja Cat did an episode of uh, Therapy Gecko with Lyle Drescher, um, and she spoke about the moment that she did an imp- uh, impression of Cardi B and received backlash for it. Later I on. like almost got into a beef because of Celsius. What I blame the cell. It's not me. Like I, I. So I was singing a song the song like i filmed myself doing the song in the crazy voice and it was like my really bad impression of that person and people took it super wrong they like thought that i was like trying to like start cause drama and like issues when really i was just being a (laughs) absolutely this is the impression it sounds like she was watching Love on the Spectrum and she was making fun of one of them. I tell you this though, if she hadn't had said at the end of that audio yeah i'm gonna be canceled yep. nobody would have cared yep yep because uh at the end of the audio she did sit out watch i'm gonna be don't cancel me all right that she did it for she did it on purpose she's also done other impressions well i think people just be so psyched out about how great and how well they can do impressions that they they just don't care because she's also uh um did an impression of scissors share ariana grande beyonce and britney spears she's actually really good at it so she actually ate that up but the fact that i think probably why cardi b got upset is because a lot of people always joke about how bad like her English is and how she can't talk and all of her and Jocelyn and Nandis, people have been making fun of their accents and how they talk forever. So, uh, but yeah, she was being a butthole about it. But is that making fun of how the Cardi talks or just like you, you making fun of her rap cadence? I think both. I, you know I think it's just both. Just the yeah. rap cadence yeah. of that record, yeah. that particular record. Yeah, yeah. I, I think all of it. But mm. if that, that energy make drink make you do that? Nah, she oh, was oh. lying. Oh, okay. She always oh. acting all dumb like that on, on live. <laughs> he just doing all types of stupid stuff. Like, you know, to go viral. So she already knew what was up. Was mm. she ding dong? Like, she already did that. Ding she, dong. She already know. But she ate that up, though. Uh, DJ Khaled's cousin cuts him off. So... DJ Khaled's cousin, uh, Fadi Masalet, spoke to uh, the Neighborhood Talk, and he explained that he had distanced himself from DJ Khaled for not speaking on a genocide happening in Palestine. Play number three. That's not DJ a- Khaled, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, everyone has their reasons, but there's no reasons, there's no excuse when you're actually a Palestinian, you know what I mean? And um, and for me, my mother lives there, you know what I mean? Uh, we're from the same village, same families, so, like, there's no excuse. And uh, right now, my heart and dedication is everything with Palestine and I, I go there a lot. My Like I said, my mother lives there. I do a lot of charity work with a lot of refugee camps there. Um, I do a lot of fundraisers to raise money for Gaza and, and uh, all the all the refugees in, outside of Gaza and the West Bank. Does Khaled know that's his cousin? Absolutely, probably so. Okay. I hate uh, that though. I, I, I yeah. hate that because it's, it's, your mission is not my mission. Yeah. Because I don't understand or maybe I don't know or maybe I don't know in detail or maybe I'm doing things that people don't know about mm-hmm. and I just don't want to say. Yeah, I agree with that last you know point I mean? that you said. Maybe he is. How do we know he's not doing anything? Correct. Um, just That's because right. he hasn't said it publicly or put mm-hmm. it out there. But this isn't the first time that um, DJ Khaled has been criticized uh, for saying this. DJ Vlad actually talked talk to uh, Charlemagne about this at the Breakfast Club. Drake is the most famous Jewish person on earth, essentially, right? Who mm-hmm. else could, could do a tour and fill out coliseums worldwide who's Jewish besides Drake, right? Khaled is the most famous Palestinian in the world, but neither one of them has said anything about this at all. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, well, well, they're not politicians, whatever. They influence hundreds of millions of people, which ultimately has an influence on the world. And you're not choosing to, to, to say anything. And Drake, who has a Jewish mother, you know, which by Jewish law makes him Jewish. But not only that, his parents got divorced when he was five years old and he grew up with his Jewish mother and her Jewish relatives in Forest Hills, which is a Jewish community in Toronto. He had a bar mitzvah. And then when this happens, he doesn't say anything because I think that he doesn't want to potentially affect his record sales. 
But why does he have to say anything? Him or, like, why, why, does, why does him or Khaled have to say anything publicly? They don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying as, as representatives of these communities, their voices are powerful and they should say something. I don't know why people want them to speak out about these issues so bad. Like, I, I don't know what they're doing, you know, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they feel mm -hmm. about these situations. But why do we have to hear it? Like, what does it matter if they well, say something Well, maybe they're not talking about us. Maybe they're talking about the Palestinians, you know, the Palestinians and the people that they, they're from there. I mean, I guess, you know, they, this is a big group of people uh, that, that I, I feel that they feel like they want to be supported by two of the, the mainstream, like, biggest I, but people. But you I don't know how they feel. doubt those yeah. people that are in Palestine are sitting around thinking, when is Khaled going to say something? No, yeah. they're trying to survive every day. Yeah, I understand hey, what, what you're saying. Yeah, DJ Flat also said uh, it's because both are so thirsty to maintain their relevance that they wouldn't dare risk insulting a segment of their fan base. So yeah, and the reason why I said he he mm -hmm. talked to Charlemagne at the breakfast club was you was the only one who basically said what you just said. How do we know? How do we know that they're not saying anything? How do we know that they're just you know? <laughs> so that's that's why I said you. I'm pretty sure. I asked the right question, now. no, oh, Jack. I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. what you said. It. I'm sorry, Amy. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, look. Last story. DC Young Fly was robbed in L.A. Um, what? Yeah, DC Young Fly was apparently robbed at Hollywood Improv. He posted to his Instagram and said, "I just want my bag back." Um, I had some personal things and uh, personal belongings in there. I was at the Hollywood Improv. And he also captioned, just to, just politely find a way to get it back to me. I had personal things in there. Mm. Um, I thought this story was important because, man, like, it, L.A. is very dangerous. When you say Rob, what you mean? Like somebody came up to him with that thing out or they just or stole it, something so from him? So the story is still uh, developing. Okay. So um, allegedly he was robbed. At, uh, at the Hollywood Improv. Um, I doubt somebody walked up on D.C. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. Somebody yeah. must have stole his bag out the back. Like Absolutely. When he was performing, he left his bag in, in, they, in the dressing room. And somebody more like. than likely yeah. took it because they know that he was just there. Um, so that's that's also, that's important. So I hope, hope hopefully he got his, uh, his bag back. And then I also wanted to include that comedian Coco Brown, um, she lost her house in Georgia and she it caught fire and she and her 12 sons, um, they lost their clothes and everything. Um, and they're currently staying at a shelter until mm -hmm. they get uh, things back in order, which is so, so sad. So uh, if uh, you can mention their They have a GoFundMe. Go they go have a GoFundMe. Yeah, I'm looking so at it right now. Go to yeah, page. I mean, this, he can't spell, yo. I just told him I would say this because it's really sad seeing... You know, somebody go through this. You know what I mean? Like they got a goal of fifty grand for her. She's yes. at forty thousand. I'm about to leave something on her. Goal That's amazing. Right? And she's well known in um, God Georgia. Damn. So, yeah. Nineteen yeah, percent tip. What? Oh, go fund me. They shouldn't get no tip wow. for no GoFundMe. Yeah, I'm about to say no. I, I always, no. <laughs> I always want to do those people get all their money because I know GoFundMe has to cut into it. Coco Brown. But That's do right. they? Yeah. Stories on TMZ too. If you want to read more about it, they got yeah. pictures. Very sad. I'm leaving yeah, something exactly. right now. All right. Well, that is Jess with the mess. Thank, Thank you, Jess. You. Thank you. And don't send me no more DMs about sad stories or no stories if y'all can't type, <laughs> y'all. Damn. All right. When we come back, we got the People's Choice Mix. Let's go. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.